Start. Record. Action. Take Action. one. Action. Take one. Take Scene two. one. Take two. Take as many as you need. Just do it. <laughs> okay, we got the rings clean. Yes, sir. I made sure I didn't mix them up any. No more than you need to. Okay, we got to figure out which piston goes where because now they're used. They're all chewed up because somebody had a bad motor. So we're going to put this into where it belongs. Okay. So you look at the bad side and the good side. See, that's uh -huh. the good side. That's the bad side. Uh -huh. That's the intake. The bad side always goes to the thrust side, which is the back of the motor. So good side, crappy side, intake. Uh -huh. So that's rear and that's front, you see? Yep. See how that works? Mm -hmm. I thought they did it wrong when I got like the that, you'd have an intake valve problem. See, the pocket to be on the intake. That's what I thought they did before. So this is rear, this is front. Mm -hmm. So you gotta make sure you don't mix them up. So put that on the front, and that's on the rear, because this is front and this is rear. Yep. That's how you don't mix it up. Okay, then we're gonna put the clips in there. Where do you want to put the clips at? They're going in a little groovy, huh? They go in the piston. A little groove there. Now you notice I got a cover over up here. Uh-huh, just in case it goes flying. I'm watching, I'm right dead on it, man. Oh, up here? Yeah, I see you got a cover. Your eyeballs are on that, but not anything else. <laughs> yeah. That way these can't go boom and go oh, up Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you missed that. Yeah. I know, I know. Long it up in the motor, so you can't go into the motor, so. Right, right. That's what that's for. So you're missing all the highlights. I don't want it, dude. No, I don't know about that. I want it dead nuts, man. Can you see I got shoes on it there? Yeah. Okay, good. That's very important. You got that, that special tool called the screw and driver. Oh, a used one too. Yeah. You want it to be sharp and scratch something. I'm trying to scratch something. Oh, you want to scribe it as you're putting it in, huh? Did you hear it go pop? Yeah. So now it's in there. Uh-huh. You try to rotate it in there to make sure it's in there good. Yeah. Yours doesn't rotate at all. So those are the kind, huh? Uh, I make sure I have the wire over the hole so you can get this out later. Mm -hmm. And you take their pen. No oil? No. Put it in there like that. Mm -hmm. Why does it got spurs in there? So we had that nice and loose yeah, before, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. Got a burr in there. Mm -hmm. Taking that ring out. The ring's pissing so thin right there. Huh. Appears to be holding. Mm -hmm. And the reason I like wire clips is, see how this is chamfered? Mm -hmm. When a chamfer hits the wire, what happens? It stops it right there. It jams the clip. Oh, it jams it in there. Okay. Tighter into the piston. Mm -hmm. So it's harder to get out. So every time that thing goes bang, 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 it doesn't go through. Mm -hmm. like that. It gets tighter every time it hits it. Mm -hmm. Now if you had a flat spiral lock on there, or a, or a circlip style, It'd be hitting it, trying to, it's hitting on the side. Try to knock it out. Over here, over here. Oh. It's hitting on the side like that, and eventually it'll knock this wall right out. You know, it'll clip will come out. Mm -hmm. These ones here just jams them in tighter. Right. But if you hit it enough times, it still will script a groove and pop it out eventually. It just takes more effort to do it. Okay, I put the clip on the right side of the piston, so I can put the pin from the left side when I put the motor together. That's my preferred side, because you don't have all the lifters and shit in your way. So now I'm going to do this other one. So you're pushing in and see the holes right there. The clip, yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. Then you make sure you push this down into the clip equally as you can anyway. See that's in the clip. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you just take this, go like this over here, mm -hmm. and you can jam it out. So mm -hmm. Like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you hear it? I heard it. You can see it, too. You know, it's solid. And mm -hmm. that way you don't scratch up your piston like I did on this one on my screwdriver. Well, I don't see any scratches, but, you know. <laughs> Not bad, anyway. So, anyway, that's mm -hmm. how you know it's in there good. Because it doesn't sound like that if it's not hitting even. It's a good solid mm -hmm. hit. So you can tell a lot of things by noise. So you think I should have run that cop down last night to give him a ticket, huh? Yeah, the one that did the illegal left turn uh -huh. on 15 cars and caused an accident almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
What would he say to me when I said that to him? He would probably give you a ticket and arrest you. Yeah. How about if I wanted to uh, put the cuffs on him and take him in? He would have probably uh, claimed that you were resisting arrest and shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think that idea but about if he, it. But if he was arresting arrest and you shot him, that should be okay then, right? Yeah. Tit for tat. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now you got an uppers and downers on them things? No, I don't take drugs. No, no, right there. Uppers and downers. Man, you start start taking them, man. You're missing out, man. I just knocked that down. Okay, so I already forgot what I did. You put the bottom one in. Okay, I have a gap someplace. I got a lot. You, you, you got me into drugs now. Okay. Okay, there's the gap. You want to stagger that? And yeah. the, the other gap was over here. See, there's the uh -huh. other gap. Right. See, you see gap, gap. Uh-huh. Now, this gap here, uh. we're going to put 180 from this gap. So that means you go over this side of the piston. You stick it right there. And rotate it on. Off, yeah. Just roll it on in Just there. Just roll it on. Huh? Then you take this, you put a little pressure this way to make it easier to go in. Yeah, yeah. Then you put your thumbnail on it and shove it across. Uh -huh. You put a big scrape across your right. piston. Yeah. Then you make sure it rotates freely. Then you go to the next rings. Now, they're all mixed up, so you have to figure which one's which. So you see how you have two of each? Mm hmm So which one's top? It's got a little button. Okay, the top one is the uh, narrow one. In the same width. Okay, the non-parkerized. Non-parkerized mm -hmm. is what? That's parkerized. Which one is it? That goes on for the lower. That's the second ring. <coughs> you are correct. And also you got a little Now the second dimple. ring has a dot yeah, in it. Right. Titty. Mm -hmm. Tit goes up. <coughs> it's a reverse twist because he has a chamfer on the bottom. Mm -hmm. They call it reverse twist because the ring flexes. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a scraper. It flexes mm -hmm. like this. Digs in this edge here, so it scrapes the ring. Actually, mm -hmm. excuse me, it goes the other way. It'll scrape the ring, so it'll clean the cylinder better. Scrapes better and seals. Now, for these here, if you twist these on like we did the oil ring, mm -hmm. you will permanently screw the ring up. All right. It'll be all uh, twisted. Yeah. And rings don't like being twisted. They don't mm -hmm. seal. They mm -hmm. have to sit flat. All right. So, what you do is you put them in the groove over here. You put your two thumbs on there. Uh -huh. You put your two fingers over here and you spread them apart. Very gingerly. See how they're in the wrong groove? Yeah. That means you're in the wrong spot. So you have to move them up to the correct groove. Right. And you're still pushing right here uh -huh. and you roll across that piston. Yeah. And now you're in the correct groove here. Right, right. Then I just come across here my thumbs. I just put a little light pressure. Pop them in. Pop you in. got one more to go, huh? And then go we'll see it's not it's in one you're groove, right, right. not the other. Second groove. Mm -hmm. The key is you want to put, your thumb has a large area, you put pressure right. equally. Don't want to jam it in. Then you want to make sure it spins nice and freely mm -hmm. in that groove. Now if you twisted the ring, it'll be tight and it won't, it won't slide easily. That means you screwed the ring up. You gotta get new ones. The other thing is if you go too far out, you're going to snap and break them in half. That's not good. Well, I guarantee you, <clears throat> if I live to be 190, I'll never do this, okay? okay. Now this here is a top ring. Now a top ring has no markings on Ooh, it. no markings. Well, sometimes they'll have a number on it someplace, sometimes. Does it matter which way it goes? Well, any markings you find go up. Right. If there's no markings, then it doesn't really matter. Also, if you look at the ring, cross-section-wise, you see how it's square. Mm -hmm. It's equal. The second ring is not equal. See, it has a groove on the back side. Chamfer. Mm -hmm. That's why it matters. So this one doesn't matter which way you go. So put the flattest side down. Mm-hmm. See how, see how yeah. nice and smooth that is? Right. See how that's not quite as smooth? Right. So flat side goes down. Because gotcha. cylinder pressure pushes down, mm -hmm. and it seals against the Tapers. base of the ring. Yeah. It doesn't seal against the top of the ring land, it screws against the bottom of the ring land. Mm. That's how they work. Okay, just like before, you put it in the groove, and bring it around. See, I'm not in the groove. See, I'm in the wrong mm. groove. Yep, yep. I'm in the detonation ring. Are these rings as good as perfect circle? I don't know. They don't say perfect, they must not be. Oh. Was that the first ring maker perfect circle? Mm, I thought Grant was. Ring maker. You see that one doesn't want to go down, so I don't, I don't spread it anymore. So hmm. I'm gonna spread it further. Yeah. Let's see how it goes down. There you go. Now those nice oh. sharp edges there dig into your thumb really right. nice right here. Be careful. 
Now, if you want, you can use a tool over here. Spreader? Spreader. Mm -hmm. Now, this one was made by Blackhawk, and there's the part number. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, I've had this for like 35 years now, but you they might still make them. You don't need them when you're doing it that way, do you? Usually on new rings, I don't use them, but on used rings, I do. Because now, you got to stagger those two used gaps, rings are really right? Sharp. 180 off on those two gaps. Right now, I'm making sure that the ring spins freely, because it wasn't spinning freely there for a minute. That means I had some grit or something in the ring line. Mm -hmm. Now it's smooth and mm -hmm. evenly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, now the next thing is we got to figure out where our gaps are at. So there's one gap there. That mm -hmm. means the other one's 180 over, right there. Mm -hmm. So we have gaps on this side and this side. So we go over here, that side and this side, where the other gap will be now. So I'll rotate this one until the gaps are there. And then I'll take this other one and go 180 over here. So now. Your gaps are on the 45 degree angles, mm -hmm. not on the thrust and not on the wrist pin side. The gaps are on the 45 degree spots. Okay, that's ready to go. Huh? And they're all 180 apart from each other. Make yeah. sure they all fit good. If they do, that one's good to go. Now we do the same thing on this one. So at this time, we don't waste time yakking about it. Get our hours up already. At the racetrack, you only got an hour to do the whole damn job. That's taking part, putting it back together, and fixing it in the middle. <clears throat> See, that hurts. I'm stuck in the wrong groove. I'm making that look really good, don't I? Keep screwing. You it can't up. lube it, can you? Keep screwing it up. Can you lube it? Not now, huh? No. Then you never be able to get it on. Huh? I'm lubing right now. Okay, that side I'm gonna have up. Mm -hmm. Ah, that hurt. See, when you have that detonation groove in there, it kind of confuses you a little bit. Been nice and free. There's my gap for that ring. Okay. That piston looks much better now. Isn't it? That's because it's the front. See, when the motor turns over, all the grit hit this side here first. Over here. Okay. See all the grit? The motor goes this direction. All mm -hmm. the grit hits the rear cylinder. And whatever gets past the rear cylinder hits the front cylinder. So the rear cylinder is like a filter at the front. Right. Thing is, you shouldn't have had all that grit in there. That was all your fault. So now we do the important part: we put lubrication. Lube it or lose it. That dog is noisy. He he is sleeping good. Look at that dog. Yeah, yeah, he's looking good. Scooby. Oh, well, you disturbed me before I did it. What do you mean? Leave me alone. I was dreaming. Screwing that dog. He was dreaming. He's having a happy nappy. He's dreaming all about taking a dump sometimes. Go get some young girl dog. That's what he's after. He to find him a little toy poodle out there. <laughs> fee fee. He's looking for fee fee. All right. Them toy you know, I pre lube the cylinder by doing it this way. Mm hmm. Now this real fine cylinder finish that I have, that I use, mm -hmm. you don't need much oil because it doesn't do anything. It just slides right past. Right after you finish my edge, you can start on another one, huh? 
Why would I want to do that? Don't you have some weight on you? Maybe not an engine, something. How about the old boy with this uh, old Harley there, that guy with that XA Harley? No, yeah, I'm not working on that. You're going to, right? Eventually. Just got to do valves, right? Yeah, I got to do valves and piston and guide. Got to make everything. Oh. Can't buy parts for an XA. Nowhere, no how, huh? Nope. Here was it all that we had. Yeah. Pre-lube. So I pour the pre-lube on top of the rod set. Work it in. You been watching the Olympics? Nope, I'm pouring oil in your motor though. I don't care about that either, but you can't help but watch some of it. It's on there all the time. Well, you don't have to watch that channel. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much it. Yeah, I put oil in there until it hits the flywheel. See how there's no oil yeah, in your flywheel uh, yet? Right. That's because it's a stupid Sportster late model. It's got a big sump in the bottom. Now you want to make sure there's no oil coming out the bottom before I you did keep tighten it. up that screw down there a little bit on the pump. It's, it's, not, it's it, not pouring it's out. It's hand yet. tight, okay, that screw? Yeah, well, it's not pouring out the bottom yet. So. It might need a little tight though on the screw. Okay, so now we put some oil in there until we hit the bottom. See, we're still not getting oil in there yet. Well, have you gone around? Yeah, we got you got know. a screwdriver, might need to tighten that bottom bar. Screw with it. Uh, it's too late. Pressure. Too late now. That dog's already asleep again. Damn. That dog sleeps a lot. Okay, next thing we gotta do is get the gasket goop going. Now, are you gonna attempt to pull these off? No. Okay, just making sure. I'm gonna want to tilt them to the inside, though. You mean like they're supposed to be? Yeah. Not bigger there. Wouldn't go away. So you like that better than that copper coat, but you think either one of them is kind of good enough? I don't use copper coat. I use those. Mm -hmm. So I guess you think this is better, huh? It looks better, huh? It doesn't have that stain of copper. Huh? I've never used a copper coat. Oh. I've only seen it. I used copper anisees a couple times. How about that? Uh, I like the silver anisees. Permatex, I think, makes the uh, copper coat. It comes in a spray can or in that. I've heard some of the times they take and spray it, get it tacky. I don't use Permatex products. Mm -hmm. I use Loctite and Gasket Sense products. Mm -hmm. And three bot. Once you find something that works for you, stick with it. Why change? That's it. Unless you find something better. Why bother? Some people don't like this stuff. It works. I know it's been advertised forever in a million years. I don't know that I've used it way back, maybe. I don't know. I've been making it for a hundred something years. I know, and I've seen it, like I say, it's as old as Blue Away. So you saw it in your advertising back in the 20s? Well, yeah, whenever I was born, I've been seeing this thing. <laughs> and Blue Away, that Blue Away and Semichrome. Yeah. I guess they're different companies for sure, but they were all back in that day. It's amazing how that blue away works, huh? It actually does take the blue away. It's a rubbing compound. But it comes back, huh? It's a rubbing compound is all it does. Yeah. Okay. So we goop up all the surfaces. Stick the gasket down. Now if you put the gasket <clears> upside <throat> down, this real thin spark will be over here in the thinner oh. area. And the gasket will be overhanging more on this side. Mm -hmm. so. Fits perfect. Yeah, so do it the correct way. The holes line up better this way too. Mm -hmm. They don't quite line up when you have it the other way. Theoretically, there's not any, there's no pressure there, is there? Yeah, there's pressure. Yeah, there's some, huh? Cold cylinder pressure. Okay, Crank. I think we took all your oil. Come out the bottom yet? I ain't coming out, don't look like. Uh oh. Oh man. Somebody hit the dog with the oil, oil container. You got it hitting the bottom? There's still no oil down there yet. Have you gone around? Yeah, I went around. There's oh, yeah, it is. Oh, no, it's where you poured it in, huh? There's a little bit on that side, but not much. There's enough in there. Yeah. Shit, that was like half a quart was stuck in there. So. Okay, now, next thing you do is put the pistons in there correctly. After you lubricate the case. What are we going to lubricate it with? That's stuck there. 
Yes, that stuff right there. Now you see how you got those porosity holes right over here? Mm-hmm. Make sure you get them good. So put an well, don't you put the pistons on first, box? So you put an extra thick coat over there. Now see how thin your case is over oh, there? Oh, I know it. That's because you had a lot of core shift on your motor. A lot of what? Core shift. What's that? That means when I poured the case, they didn't have it right in the spot. The core moved a little bit in the mold. Oh, okay. It got real thin on one side. <laughs> That happens every now and then. <laughs> 